welcome back to FM Tahiti. We've got some more league games uh, for you. Just a few things to kind of cover from last time. Um, oh, what am I looking at? Schedule, that's the one. So we had two international matches. So with Marquesa, I played Micronesia and the Central African Republic. I stuck with the more or less same tactic. I've tweaked it slightly. I've tweaked some of the instructions a little bit. Uh, but pretty much the same tactic. Almost entirely the same team. I think I changed one player because they're injured. And it was a fringe player from last time he didn't play, so it made no real difference. Beat Micronesia comfortably, 3-1. And then, I think impressively, we beat the Central African Republic 3-0. So there are a few places higher than us on the uh, rankings. But I think this is the first time a team from... You know, our French Polynesian islands, Marquesa, Bass, Austral, and so on, have beaten a team outside of Oceana. So, kind of good. He was a friendly, but he never looked in doubt. We kind of pummeled them, so that was, that was pretty good. And then if we look at the humpbacks, uh, we drew against Motu 1 and lost against uh, Morpia, which was the last uh, match that we sort of recorded, and then we won in the quarterfinals against San Pedro, and this was with me trying a slightly different tactic. So the one I, I wanted to use against Morpair, but then got, you know, two players sent off, so I couldn't do, I used against San Pedro. So we've got, where is it? Motu won now in the semi-finals, so actually it's potentially a, a kind of doable route into the final, that which would be a nice way to finish things off for us. We're going to play Manue now. Um, they did alright against us in the cup before we beat them eventually, but they pushed us. Um, let's see who we can bring. So we had a few injuries here and there. Let's bring on Pons. That should do the trick. That should be everyone. Lamb, Hook, Makasina, McIntyre at the back. Dalloin, Andre and Spearling, Pons, Gerard and Yannin. That's a pretty strong squad. And we're going for the kind of the just keep swimming, the passing um, approach. Not tweaked it that much since the last one. I want to give it a few games to see if we can work, if it'll actually settle in. In this, in this poor form, please. Please, guys, please. Uh, since we signed him, Huck's been solid, but quiet. I think he's managed to grab a goal from a corner. That's about it. So when we used this tactic against San Pedro in the uh, quarterfinals, something like 25 shots to their one shot, or something ridiculous like that, we completely dominated the game. We had a lot of kind of blocks on our shots and things like that. Spearling almost had that one in. It was um, it was more than a one nil kind of score line. We battered them one nil, essentially. See how it does against a slightly better team, San Pedro in the division below. So they'd be completely shut up shop against us. I don't know about society. I don't. They might be. Too many way island society. I mean, they might be a bit more attacking against us. <laughs> Sorry, I was just making random noises in reaction to that one. I, I didn't expect a goal to come from that. And again, I don't think that's really the tactic. That's just a bit of Gerard brilliance. He's only in his fourth goal of the season, though. So he's not as prolific at this stage as he has been in previous seasons. Obviously, still got time, but maybe that goal will set him off. We'll get him going. On Yannin. The onside? Yeah, apparently. That's worked out alright so far as well. So both our strikers grabbing a goal so far. Andre go for as well. I just need another goal to feel safe. Since we're only 10 minutes in, we could easily come back with the way we play. Go 
One lamb. Get it in. So you pass it around. The only thing I've noticed that's putting me this, you know, putting me off this tactic a little bit is how Jan and Gerard seem to have their backs to goal a bit more often now. So in the previous sort of long ball tactic, they're almost always running onto the ball or getting it cross to them and they were kind of side onto it. It's like Jan in that last highlight was back to goal and it ended up going away from goal. He didn't turn on it. So maybe when they get more used to the tactic, he'll be running onto it a bit more. Maybe I need to put the kind of run on the passes. I can't remember if I put that on actually. Check at half time. Poor cross from Gerard. They've got Jordan Naren. Go and stop it. So a bit of a tactical revolution going on, and by a bit I mean like a tiny amount. In that this is still a four four two with more or less the same players, just with different instructions. And then internationally we've gone for something that is actually quite different for us, but not you know particularly exotic. But it is different. We've played five seasons. We're in our six seasons, so it is a bit of a change from just pure hoofball. Spearling giving it another go. I think he's going to have to come off at half time just because of that yellow card. The short option. I don't know if the short options are bugged or not. I've heard some people say that they are a little bit bugged. I think some of the strikeless kind of like Guido Mary. Posts. There are a few examples of some short routines. Andre with an ambitious long range shot. So 10 shots there to 60% possession. We are controlling this a lot more than we would have done in previous games. Maybe this is what we need. Maybe this is our kind of moving into the, the realm of champion. I say that, but we're obviously we're doing really badly in the league. But maybe this is what we needed. I think it's that kind of reactionary hoofball to begin with when you're against bigger teams because they give you more space behind them. So you play cautiously, draw them on, and then hit them when they've come too far forward and you regain the ball. And then we had to change that a couple of seasons ago um, after we had a, a good first season because they weren't attacking us as much. There wasn't as much space behind, so we were just kind of passing it aimlessly because we're still on cautious so we changed it to a more attacking thing so we're actually taking more risks um going for more through balls and that eventually paid dividends for us <clears throat> i think maybe now because we are champions and we're one of the most reputable sides in the league teams just aren't giving us the same kind of space they're not attacking us as much one of those, if we're playing the ball long, we're just giving the ball away, not getting it back. And also, there's not much space. Oh, go on, Gerard. It's a good tackle. They need oh, another good one. They needed those tackles. They really did. There's still a bit of a long ball going in there. Cormac. Oh, good shot. So he was the um, head of youth development's fever dream. He's the, he's the player who picked out as the, the pick of the crop of the golden generation, with the golden generation just being terrible. That's not a bad, not a bad shot. So yeah, we got less space behind. So maybe this season, that's why we had that kind of stuttering start with the long ball. It's worked out all right. So yeah, four nil. The player sent off suggests this tactic might have some legs. Maybe I don't need to put um into if I got it on. I've got pass into space on. It's fine then. I'm tempted to give this tactic a go with um Marquesa Islands, but they didn't really look like they had enough depth to play a four four two. Which is worrying, isn't it? 
we say that a team's got no kind of depth to play one of the most basic, I guess, bread and butter, and by that I mean boring, um, formations. I say that, but I love the 4-4-2 when it's hoofball. See, we're keeping hold of it, we're recycling the ball and then getting a shot off. 19 shots there too, it's... I don't know what I've done, maybe because I've changed the takers. I've got the short option. So I always put a short option, I always have put a short option in there just to try and draw one of their players away, but because their players aren't coming out to mark them, Jared's got another, that is hat trick. Super hat trick. He doubled his season's tally in one game, so he's back. Yeah, so normally they have a player comes out, and that's, I normally draw one out. At least that's what I do with the long throws. So I go for long throws, but have someone come short, so hopefully defender comes across, and that's usually what happens, but they've decided not to bother marking them in this match. I am worried I've accidentally like hit on an exploit. Oh, it'd be good to keep a clean sheet, wouldn't it? There's no shot option there. I need to change the take because I think that's what it is. I think with players leaving and players coming in, I need to change my like just set piece takers because it's changing things. Jordan Aaron with the delivery. <sighs> Unlucky not to get a goal then. Let's make some subs. So some subs. Let's make. We've got two left. Let's bring on Bouvelet for Moses. Bring on a key for Gerard. He's got his hat trick. Let's give him the applause. Let's give Yannin a chance to catch up. A key who's on a bit of a goal drought apparently. Had the opportunity to get one against them. There we go. So we are finding space still. At least against Manue, we might play the next match and just get trashed completely. But I can't really complain with a six-one. There we go. I might make a version of this tactic with a target man so that Tamangaro can play there. Although I think he'll play fine as a poacher as well. He's just a bit of a big lumbering poacher. Kaiser going on a little run. There's absolutely nobody there. That was poor. Defensively, there's absolutely nobody there. Might need to work on that. Just might need some tweaking. I don't think it's a finished product yet. Might need a little bit of tweaking. Moved to sixth there. It's not a great position, but it's obviously an improvement. Five minutes for Yannin to try and get a hat trick and equal Gerard. I think this match is kind of done. I don't think they're getting back into it. It'd be nice to maybe try and sneak a goal in. Go for a complete route. Tetero drawing against Bora Bora. 2-1 are winning against Mount T. Chance of drawing as well. This is the eel season. I think the eels were doing quite well in the league. Still look a little. There we go. I was gonna say we still look a little frail defensively. I don't know if it's just they're quite good. So I've got them as wing backs rather than swing backs. I think I've got them as wing wing backs rather than wing backs. Yeah. 
I just think some of them must fall back so a little bit further back. So a bit Good win there. I think he's a clean sheet, but 6 2. That's alright. Tetero and Huahina gradually running away with this. We can make that gap up. We can. So we're going to come back for the next match, which is almost certainly the Sky Brights match, which would be an interesting one. Since we beat them in the Super Cup already. And we'll be back in just a minute. And we're back. So you've got the Sky Brights. Uh, most of the teams are playing, so we'll keep an eye on how everyone's doing in this kind of early race for the OCL. We're at home against the Sky Rights this time. We've got a few changes we have to make. So Smith, he's done his knee in or something, twisted it in training, so we're going to have to replace him. Pons is suspended, because obviously, why not? Why not spend most of your time suspended? Wait, so we'll bring on Cameron Bell, who's a youth player. Looks like he's he's got some promise. I mean, he won't reach his potential while we're at the club, because we'll be moving on at some point. Tamangara is wanted by someone, or oh, to buy, to buy one him. There we go, more or less unchanged, apart from those two forced changes from last time when we won 6-2 against Manue. Hopefully we'll get a similar result here. Although the Sky Brights are a bit stronger, so maybe they will attack us a bit more. And if that's the case, we can always go to the hoof ball. If that's what we need, we've got it. We had to say, I was going to say, it's, we've got it in reserve, considering it's the tactic we've been playing for seasons and seasons, but this one will do the trick. Go on, cut it back. Get spearing, just couldn't get it in on target. So whilst this is going on, now, I've got a few blogs I need to catch up on reading wise. So I don't know if you've ever come across it. There's a blog by someone called Franjo, um, F R A N J O. Um, it's FM17. Oh, good goal. Not offside. Guess he cut it back. I guess he was technically slightly backwards, yeah. So yeah, there's the Franjo blog, and it's kind of done in that first-person story style, rather than that this is what my season's been like. It's kind of match by match. It's pretty well written. It's quite entertaining, even though it's FM17. You don't, obviously, it's a story you don't really notice. You're not talking about the kind of features of the game. It doesn't matter. It's the, the narrative of it. And in a similar kind of style as well is one by Vince Lloyd. So if you go to the blog, it's uh, Vince Lloyd dot home dot blog just let me check pretty sure that's what it is they're on twitter as well so you can follow them if you want yeah vince lloyd dot home dot blog and um, they're doing the pentagon challenge but they're doing that that similar kind of um first person narrative kind of story to it which is pretty good it's a good read so if you, you're more of a blog Person, you want to add some blogs to your repertoire, those are two I'd, I'd recommend. It's a bit different from the kind of, you know, Cleon or Team Busquets, Busquets, um, Dictate the Game kind of blogs, which are about a very particular thing like a tactic or an approach or some kind of, oh, go on, Maxina, took it so well. But these are more kind of story based blogs, which are quite nice. Go on, get it in, Spearling. Doing a lot of these short corners. Again. It's worked out. Yeah, let's put that one in. I feel like we might be exploiting something by accident. Because no one's coming to them, so they get plenty of time. And there's people on the edge. I guess. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. If you keep scoring too many from it, I might change it, just because if the AI can't defend against it normally, then it's a bit of an exploit. It's not something I'm doing intentionally, because it's not the way I've got things set up. 
Still not changed my, my takers. It's not bad. Got a bit of a game going on now. I think I might mention in a previous video as well, um, various football manager podcasts that I listened to, so the five star potentials, the key one, my favourite ever one was the deep line pod, um, that's not around anymore, uh, but five stars, really good, grass and gears, really good, game on my pod, really good, Aussie pods, really good, um, but also out today is the Dictate the Game podcast, which I've not listened to yet properly, so I'm going to do that next. And there's the FM Creators one, uh, which I've listened to. And they're kind of at early, early days, early stages for them, but I hope they do well with them up here. Looks out and they cover some interesting stuff, because I think the more podcasts, the better. It's the same with YouTube content or blogs. The more the better, because then you've got something that'll tickle your fancy when you need it. So I've shot them 16 to 3 so far. Alright, pass. Interesting. One thing I quite like about this is because the way I've got it set up, I don't have that kind of ball winning destroyer in there. So Weaver doesn't really have a place in the side, but Andre and Spieling can both now play together either as the Mazala or as the supporting midfielder. And seeing as they're two of my best midfielders, it's kind of I'm glad I've got tactic that oh there we go. Another one by Gerard. But yeah, I'm I'm glad I've got one that kind of before it was a case of it was either Andre or it was Spieling. Now I can have them both in and bring on McCormack. I was going to say, it's going to be Weaver's last season. It probably is just because whoever... Oh, that was a bit of a rough tackle. Didn't quite work out as intended, did that one. They're back in it. Look at this. Storming in. Let's play it on. They're doing all right with their two shots on target, two goals. I feel a little bit bad for Henderson, who's replacing our first choice. Interesting ball in. Chance of winning. No two one and losing. They got ruined net. Marquez and play. I think they might do actually. Get rid of this. There we go, wait. Go along. No, I don't just smack it into the player. It's not dominating as much as we were against Manue, but they are a much better side. Yeah, you know, former former champions, I think they might be champions. Definitely former runners-up. 31 losing, chance winning. About time for some subs, I think. Let's bring off Dallow in. He's not very fit. It's not because he's not getting played in games, he's just not. That fit. Let's bring off Andre from a Cormac as well. And I guess short? Yeah. Yeah. Mathieu Roux is the keeper we picked for the international games. Let's go say hello to him at the end of the match. Ovalet, get him back in. Jan in. Gerard there with the poacher's goal. Yannin did alright with it to begin with. 4 2. <laughs> Tetro winning, Taha drawing. So Tetro making a good run. The top spots at the moment. 
I'd be clawing our way back now we've made the t these tactical changes. Maybe some hope for us. At the end of the season, when we kind of potentially move on from the humpbacks to wherever we go, hopefully the feral cats or somewhere like that, but wherever we end up, we'll do a proper kind of roundup of how things have changed for the humpbacks. Um, I've got a kind of save file from every year, it's just so I can go back and check stats, match stats and things like that. And also just in case anything catastrophic happened, I'd, I could always roll back a season if need be, which would be sad, but necessary, it's there so I don't lose everything. But yeah, I can go back and do a proper kind of comparison of where we are now compared to where we are then. And in a lot of ways we've not moved on that much, so in terms of you know, youth facilities, recruitment, coaching, not much has changed there. The stadium's changed, reputation's changed. The trophy cabinet's definitely changed. I wouldn't necessarily say it's full, but it's got more in than a lot of clubs have. Let's see if I can make one more kind of courtesy sub. Let's bring on Roach, because he might start complaining that he's not getting enough game time. I also think, because I've put look for overlaps on and distribute the fullbacks, I think my fullbacks are starting to get more and more tired. Which I need to keep an eye on because on the right I've got plenty of replacements for McIntyre. There's Morris as well as Roach and they're both pretty decent. On the left I don't think Sova and uh, Burgess are quite as good as Lamb currently. So that makes it a bit difficult. So I need to keep an eye on that. But there we go, 4-2. So you had a 6-2 and a 4-2. So consistent. We're still 7th after all of that. Team points, but we're getting to the point where we, the next few games we can start to claw back potentially up into these kind of places. So it's the end of October, We've got a couple of months to play to work out whether we're going to be in the OCL. Fingers crossed we will make it there. How's Yannin doing for goals? 11 goals in 9 appearances so far for Yannin. That's the squad. Gerard is on. Eight goals in thirteen, not quite as as prolific. Tamangara's got a couple of goals in four. O'Keefe also has one in ten. That's good, but he is he is much younger. So we'll stop there and we'll come back for the next episode, which a few games times so that might be for um the start of December maybe when we get this kind of run in map between Bora Bora maybe. It's got the uh, semi-finals to look forward to. So thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a comment or subscribe or, or like whatever you're happy with doing or follow me on Twitter if you want to at, at FMTT and have a chat with me there. Uh, if you've got any feedback or any questions, if you let me know, I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. I'm a few episodes ahead um, in terms of you know recording and, and publishing, which is where I like to be. So don't be too offended if I don't immediately answer something in a video, but I'll try and answer it in a comment at the very least in the meantime. Um, but yeah, get involved and I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.